<laughs> Did I get the name okay? Yeah, yeah, you said it right. Fantastic. Nice to meet you first and foremost, and thank you for coming on. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited to chat with you. No worries. How's everything going? Like, again, before we get into the chat, how's training been going? Are you now back in pre-season? How's COVID been and so on? So it's been good. Um, I actually was playing overseas for uh, Bordeaux in the off season of the NWSL. So I just got back and today's my last day of quarantine. So okay. I finally get to join the team tomorrow. So I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, congratulations. I bet you can't wait to actually get back into the team environment and train. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. It's been a long week. <laughs> Did you enjoy the, um, the travel across to France and enjoy playing the Women's League over there? Yeah, yeah, it was, um, it was a really great experience. I learned some French um, and it was really nice to go play in a really different environment with a completely different style than the U.S. So, yeah, it was great personally and professionally for my career. I think it helped a lot. Fantastic. And I hope, I hope you do enjoy that preseason. I bet you can't wait to leave the house first and foremost as well. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And I suppose, um, and again, what I've been doing with the other speakers as well is like, just asking for you, because I don't feel as I can do some justice to like your career and why, how you've got to your place of success now. So you can give a brief overview of how you've got to your position now, like being a player at Kansas City. And it'd be great to hear that journey, if that's okay, before we dive into the questions. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm from Utah. Um, I grew up as the first person in my family to start playing soccer. I was at recess and I played with some boys and I went home and told my mom I really wanted to quit dancing and join a soccer team. <laughs> so that's kind of where it started. I think I was seven. Um, from there, went on to play club and do ECNL, um, youth national team. And yeah, I got recruited to UCLA. So that's where I went to college um, and I loved it. And from there, I got drafted. Um, I played on a couple teams in the league. I initially got drafted to North Carolina there for two years and then to Seattle, which is now Tacoma, um, oh, well, rain. And um, in between last season and this season, I went and played in Australia for a Melbourne victory, came back, did the Challenge Cup, and then I went to play in France for the off season. <laughs> Um, and then while I was in France, I got traded to Kansas City. So this will be my first time here, but I'm really excited to get started and just be in a new environment. I like experiencing new things and having a fresh start places. So, well, yeah. I say, it sounds like it. And it's uh, very, very well traveled, so to speak. How did you enjoy the Australian experience as well? So I loved Australia. First, besides soccer, the lifestyle is amazing. You know, the beach and the city and the country all within two hours of wherever you live. So it was really amazing. Um, and yeah, it was really fun to play there. And again, it's a different style, but I think it complements coming back to the US, you know, their season's a lot shorter. Um, but yeah, it was a great experience just to live in another country and get a different type of style of training and technical game and tactical. Um, yeah, and then to come back and bring that to my team in the US has been really cool. Well, I look forward to it. And it sounds as though you've been busy away from just the playing side as well. And I'm interested to hear more about um, the voice in sport as well and what the mission is around that as well, if you wouldn't mind um, but telling me and the audience as well, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. So is that okay if I share my screen? Yeah, of course. It's, I'll stop sharing and you can share away. Okay. So I'll let you know when you can see the screen. There you go. Can you see? We can see it now, yes. Okay, so this is the Voice and Sport website. So this is what we call Voice and Sport is a female advocacy platform. Um, connects and inspires female athletes through a membership only website. Um, these athletes are 13 to 22 years old and it's all digital, which is really amazing. Um, so this is part of our community and the goal is to inspire change and empower these young girls in their sport. So first, there's three main pillars of the Voice of Sport platform. The first is the content. So everything that's on the website is created by female athletes. 
So most of them are in college and they write articles that help, you know, with mental health, body image, nutrition, um, you know, anything psychologically that happens within your sport. So say it could be helping with your mindset coming back from an ACL injury or what's the best sunscreen to use um, when you're out playing or practicing, you know, the topics range and vary. It's really cool, but it's all information that when I was younger, I genuinely wish I had access to with such a simple website to join. Um, the second is mentorship. There's me. Um, and this is where the pro athletes and the collegiate athletes get involved. So we provide mentorship either one-on-one -on -one or with a group. Um, and we, the pro athletes and the collegiate athletes pick a time and a subject. The members on the Viz website, this is the girls 13 to 22, can sign on for a mentor mentorship session and speak with a pro athlete or collegiate athlete, really about anything, any part of their game that they want. It could be, you know, those topics, nutrition, mental health, body, or your sport, or anything that's going on outside of that, which is pretty amazing because I don't think that that's something that has really been utilized in this space that is so monumental for those ages growing up in your sport. And the third is the advocacy. So a lot of the times when I'm talking to young girls um, and you know, social media is such a big tool right now and you see everybody reposting about equal pay, um, equal opportunity, media coverage, Title IX, a lot of these younger girls don't know what that actually means. So our goal is to really educate and advocate for them to start at that young age, at their middle school, high school, colleges to go in and make sure that they're holding their communities accountable for equality across the board. So, which is really amazing. And on the website, we have these tools where um, you can click and you can email your local Senator about something that's happening. You know, we're not getting as much funding in our sport compared to the boys, or there's not equal women's sports to men's sports at our school, you know, those are just examples, but pretty amazing. Um, and yeah, so another part of it is the Viz experts. These are leading nutritionists, sports psychologists, women's physicians that pair with the Viz creators and write content for these young girls. So everything is authentic and backed by science and focused on female identifying athletes which is something that is really, really rare. Yeah, that's, that's great to hear. And thank you for sharing that. And I suppose, how, how did this actually come about then? Like, how, would, how did you come about this idea? Or was it in collaboration with others as well? Or? So this was founded, let me find her, by the amazing Steph Strack. Um, so she spent 15 years working at Nike and building different businesses, advocating for women left there was CEO of Rag and Bone for a short amount of time and then came and created Voice and Sport. Um, she's a former D1 athlete and really has experienced that this is a space that really needs focus and attention. Um, you know, so many girls drop out of sport at a higher rate than boys do simply because of opportunity and role models and yeah, just empowerment from other people. So she created this, um, and she actually reached out to me last year and uh, had me on the podcast for Voice and Sport just to talk about my journey with getting to where I am. And I fell in love with the mission. It's exactly what I want to do outside of my career in playing. Um, just a really easy way, well, not easy, but a good way to give back to what I wish I could give my younger self. So that's how I became a part of it. And I'm a mentor and I'm also on the fellowship team. So I'm helping create some content and just helping spread the goodness that is voice and sport. No, it sounds fantastic. It's a great initiative as well, I suppose. Like has, like given your involvement with it over the last year, has it actually helped uh, or impacted your professional playing career as well as like hopefully your future um, non-playing career as well, shall we say? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a lot of power in being vulnerable. And I think that's something that you forget when you're playing. Um, and so to be a mentor to these younger girls and the things that are 
you talk about in these sessions is really, really humbling. And you kind of go back into nurturing your younger self and you're like, oh, you never, never talked about these things. Like, this is really amazing. And yeah, it's definitely helped my career now because I feel I have such a better mindset, especially when I'm talking to these younger girls and I'm like, do I even do these things? Do I even switch my negative thoughts to positive when I'm playing or, um, and I'm watching what I eat that closely, you know, all of these things that come up, it's really helped me personally, mentally, and in my professional career. No, but because I suppose, do you feel as though it's made you more aware of now, as you say, because of that mentorship? And I suppose it's, the same as, um, I don't know an example, like a, a fitness coach asking you to to do a certain drill and then if they can't run or do anything, then it's, does it make you more aware that you now have to lead by example as well as like being able to give that advice? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, like I said before, there's power and vulnerability and being able to talk about these things because the reason so many kids and adults drop out of sport or just quit is because there's nobody to, there's no space that's safe to, that you feel would be safe to share these things. So yeah, it's definitely made me more aware of that, that, oh, maybe I should talk about these things. And um, it's nice just to be a mentor and really just a sounding board for these younger girls that are wanting help and want to stay in sport and helping them find solutions that are healthy and really accept themselves and empower them to go out and do what they want to do. So I suppose now, now you're in that mentorship position, I suppose even like, even if there's any youth academy players coming through like the teams that you played for and they came into the first team, right, it'd probably be similar. But how is that, how do you define what a, being a successful mentor is to someone within this kind of program? How would you feel that you've had that impact to say that's been a successful like mentorship, so to speak. Yeah, I think, um, well, personally, because I know that this is something I wish I had when I was younger and I know there's so many other athletes that feel the same, um, that, you know, there's these girls that bring up subjects that are on the website that you can see and for them to keep coming back and want to talk more about it, or they can send a note, you know, when you pose a, session they can send oh I'd also like to talk about this this and this um and you get testimonials from the girls it's kind of makes your whole world that you have that small impact you know it's like for us it's the mentors it's 30 minutes of our day but you know I remember going to a Julie Foudy camp when I was younger and she signed a soccer ball and I still have that to this day it was like a shrine in my room (laughs) until I left for college I'm pretty sure um so to have more of an intimate connection with people that you idolize and that you would want to be your role models, I think is, yeah, untangible. It's, it's really amazing. It's a big, it's a big impact that you're having on these potential future athletes, hopefully as well. And hopefully you can see them flourish and progress. And it's a great initiative as well. Like, like I suppose there's a lot of time going there and from the outside, everyone sees professional soccer players as, they're just professional soccer players. Like, how would you actually find the balance between being that professional athlete compared to now diving into the professional world of industry, so to speak? Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's been a hard balance, at least for me to find, because, you know, I'm sure everybody feels this way at some point, but you, your identity feels so wrapped up in your sport. But truth is, we can only play for so long. So, you know, having this as an opportunity to give back and also another way to just an avenue of work outside of my sport is really great for me personally. Um, But yeah, I think it's a really hard balance for a lot of athletes to find, you know, you hear these stories about after athletes retire, you kind of no idea what to do with yourself. So it's really amazing to have companies like this that are kind of helping bridge that gap Um, And for me to work so closely with Steph is also amazing with everything that she's done in the business world and be learning underneath her. Um, Yeah, it's just great. So I encourage other athletes to get involved in companies that really complement what we're doing right now and give back to a community that brought us to where we are. That's great to hear that. 
kind of what's been like the um what's been like the biggest challenges but also what's been the rewards as well that came from putting yourself out there into ultimately like going from professional soccer player to now actually professional business woman within the same at the same time so to speak sorry your question is what's gotten me out there what's been the the biggest challenges and what's been the biggest rewards as well um, well, the biggest challenge is probably time, you know, <laughs> after training and whatnot, you kind of want to go to sleep or whatnot. But um, yeah, it's been really rewarding to just, like I said, give back to the community that's really brought me to where I am and given me all of this opportunity to even be here speaking after Dr. Hacker, which I was like this watching her whole presentation, um, especially what she said about fitness testing. I, I love that. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty amazing, and um, yeah, I I find the balance is good now. I think it just takes some time to you know I'm 26. I've played professional for five years now, so it takes time to come to that point where you kind of want to have another avenue um, outside of just your sport. But I think it's crucial that athletes actually do that because we can only play for so long. Because what was the um like after you after you finish playing because again a lot of there's the coach inside there's again trying to help like what did you always envision that you would go into this kind of role after your playing career or even during your playing career as well so you're taking it on at such a young age as well so I didn't think during my playing career at all actually but the opportunity presented itself um and yeah, I'm, I'm really fortunate that Steph reached out to me. But, um, you know, I've got my coaching licenses and I really enjoy doing that. Um, but I've always really enjoyed working with kids um, and trying to empower them. And, you know, I've worked for this company where it's one-on-one -on -one and small group coaching and like my sessions are always fun and I'm just trying to be positive and encourage and nothing's a punishment. There's no running, whatnot. Um, and so I've really enjoyed that. And I knew that that was more of the lane I wanted to go in instead of coaching. Um, and yeah, and then Steph created Voice and Sport, which is really right up my alley. And yeah, this is something I can definitely see myself doing for a long time. That's cool. It's a great time. And me being a former sports science director, fitness coach, running is not a punishment. It's a pleasure to do. So love to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so, the second time I've heard that and both times are from today so that's pretty cool there you go so uh, we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to keep trying to bang that drum so to speak but, um, and I'm glad that you enjoyed Colleen's uh, talk as well it was uh, fascinating it's mm -hmm. really fascinating hearing more about this is there any other kind of initiatives or anything to do with voice and sport with regards to like, the foundation or anything like that that you want to provide any more details into yeah actually um so if we go up here, you can see, so this is some of the statistics about, you know, the inequality that's offered to women's sports versus men's sports and why women drop out of, young girls drop out of sports so much earlier. Um, and a lot of that has to, has to do with opportunity in the research. You know, I know that being pro, a lot of the things that are done with us or, you know, testing, et cetera, is based off of the science done on a male body which is completely different. So Steph being the innovative woman that she is, created the Voice and Sport Foundation to go along with the platform. So this is going to have all of the lead scientists that are having research done specifically on the female body and the changes that happen with it and what that has to do with our sport. So huge initiative, such a missing piece um, in the female athlete world. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's all really I have for you. No, it's fascinating. Thank you. Like, there's, I know like within the UK and the US, there's a lot of really interesting things. I apologize if you hear banging my little boys trying to break into the room. Um, like, it's all like, like Dawn Scott is trying to bring that within the women's FA over here and ranking some performance staff are trying to help and dive into those kind of research entities as well so it's really fascinating that again 
having worked within the women's game and trying to learn more about it, it was I was amazed at just how little knowledge there was specific to the women's game. And it was all this is done on a man. How do we translate it to and like I suppose from your perspective, like kind of how how is that influencing now like kind of the work that you're doing with voice and sport and just being able to try and really make it specific as well. Well, what's amazing about voice and sport is that it's women specific. So all of the doctors, excuse me, that you see on the website or that are involved in the content are specifically working with women and are very knowledgeable about you know, puberty, breast development, and what that has to do and the effects it has on your sport, which is something I literally did not know until starting to work with boys in sport. So it's pretty amazing that all the information and everything on here is done by female physicians, which I think is really innovative and new. And yeah, I actually, I've worked with Don Scott a lot at youth national team camps and whatnot. So she's, she's really amazing. Yeah, no, I'll, I'm sure she'll be smiling from here to here when she hears that as well, no doubt. Um, I suppose the, th- the thing that I want, want to ask now is like, Having seen, like, and listened to some of the knowledge that Voice and Sport is creating with regards to working with the female app, we had an interesting talk right at the start about um, an AI app that's actually de- using, like, the menstrual cycle information to then develop training programs as well. Wow. For you as a professional player now, knowing that information, again, does it actually, should I adapt my training accordingly? When do I change my nutrition, depending on the kind of knowledge that you're creating? How is that influencing you as an athlete stroke player now to think about your training and kind of what the club are providing as well? Yeah, so that's been a huge influence. Um, you know, to bring up an example, Dawn uh, had a meeting. She, I think she went to all the NWSL teams, but I'll never forget that she came to Seattle and did a presentation about menstrual cycle and how that affects training, games, et cetera. And that's the first I've ever heard about it. Um, and you know, how that can affect nutrition and things that you need to do to help and hydration. And I've completely changed the way that, you know, I eat sleep. I never used to sleep. I eat sleep. Um, don't overtrain, uh, making sure I'm doing proper activation and recovery after training. Um, it's really made me much more professional and look out for my body and my mental health. Um, having information like that, especially coming from, um, woman who you know you trust and you know that the science and everything back behind it is specifically for women um that's been huge in my career being a rookie in the league and coming from college where you know everything's kind of set up for you for success and when you turn pro you have to really do those things on your own and find the best way possible that works individually for you so having resources like that i think is vital and if we can start that at a younger age 13 so on, then I think it will really change female sports. Because I think one of the biggest things is being able to create an independent learner is one of the best signs of like a good teacher as well. So mm-hmm. it's great to hear that. Like when you went over to France and Australia, like did you find that like the other players were educating that, or were they kind of looking at you across the room and going, "Why is she doing that? How can I learn and develop from her as well?" Yeah, so I found that a lot of it has to do with age. Um, in Australia, girls go, well, and in France, uh, the players start professional a lot younger. Colleges, and you know, you can go to college at the same time that you're playing pro. Um, it's much more common than just going to college. So I find that that's really different because that's where I learned a lot about activation and whatnot. But yeah, I have found that... Um, They think I'm the ultimate pro, which I'm not by any means, but because, you know, I'm there an hour early to activate and buy or get soft tissue or um, do some mobility on my ankles or something. And I'm staying after to stretch and get treatment. And I bring my protein every day. I have it as soon as I walk into the locker room. Um, Yeah. Girls kind of tease me or question me about it, but um, I find that it's really infectious and um, to be open about those things because those things really only add to your professional game and the longevity of your career as well. So I think the U.S. is 
ahead on that for sure, or at least in my experience, and people that I've been fortunate to have around me like Dawn, um, that have really gotten me to see those things. But yeah, I find that a lot of people <laughs> tease me about those things, <laughs> which is which is fine. But yeah, it's it's in, interesting because obviously, like listening to some of the other talks today as well, that that self belief and um, again having a form of I don't care that you you're laughing at me. I'm still doing it because I know it's good for me. I think is a really fantastic attitude to have, and you must be every uh, coach's dream to work with as well. If that's the attitude that you bring as well, uh, <laughs> I hope so. I don't know about that though. Is <laughs> it is interesting? Like the obviously there's different starting ages of profession, like within different countries. Yet you as you said, I've got you, like, you, you deem as the most professional within that environment still. Like, when when you were looking in those countries, was there anything for those athletes, like voice and sport in those different countries, or is that some, still unavailable across there as well? I mean, my experiences in France and Australia, I was never introduced to something similar to voice and sport, but voice and sport is global. And I can't remember how many countries that we're in, but it's everywhere. You know, we have Australia, France, um, South America, Africa, you know, it's, it really is global. So this is something that's not just for people in the U S or U S residents, you know, it really can be everywhere, which I think is huge. And I hope that more people from other countries get involved and see how useful this is no that that's brilliant thank you very much darren and um, there's been a question coming from uh from the audience um what coaching licenses do you have i think you mentioned it earlier during our chat as well i have my c license and i just signed up to get my b but i'm not sure when that's going to happen because i know covid is <laughs> really putting a delay on all of that but i want to get my b next oh nice I'll I was going to say that it's a fun journey, the coaching badge and the people you, I think Colleen mentioned it, the people that you meet on kind of the coaching badges of people that you end up communicating with for life. So um, I'm yeah. sure you enjoy that journey as well. You're a very busy woman. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. yeah, actually it was, it was pretty cool. The coaching license, when I got my C license, the NWSL sponsored it. So it was the first only all female coaching course that they offered and all of the mentors, you know, Carla Thompson, who has actually coached me when I was 13 years old, I think, um, was one of my mentors through the coaching license, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, it was amazing to have the NWSL do something like that and be the first ones to have an all female coaching course. Great. That's fantastic. And I suppose and um, that's brought us towards the end of our, our chat as well so thank you for coming on are there any uh concluding statements or final things that you want to say about um not just voice and sport but also like the kind of experiences you've had within your playing career up to now um no the mental side of the game is just as important important if not more than the physical so take care of your mental health and voice and sport is a place for you if you're looking for that. Um, you know, if you just want to start off and sign up as a member, um, we'd love to have you. And that's something that I personally really had to work on in my career is being vulnerable and meeting with sports psychologists and talking to other players about it. So go for it and we're here for you. No worries. Darian, we really appreciate your time and uh, good luck for preseason and uh, hope you enjoy coming out of quarantine. Thank uh, you. We're, we're about to speak to a rival head coach in the NWSL as well, so I might have to just leave a little pause in between you so he doesn't start to uh, discuss anything with you, but good luck for the uh, upcoming season as well, Darren, so thank you very much. Thanks so much.